Hello friends, I am Dr. Avnish Goel, your educator in dermatology. Now we are going to do questions with sequential arrangements in dermatology. You will be given 30 seconds to answer the question and here is your first question. Arrange these type of psoriatic arthritis on the basis of their prevalence in the patients. Your choices are axial arthritis, arthritis mutilans, distal interphalangeal joint involvement, symmetrical polyarticular arthritis and asymmetrical oligoarticular arthritis. So you have to tell the type of psoriatic arthritis. You have to arrange them on the basis of their prevalence in patients. So coming to the answer, the axial arthritis axial arthritis it is in the tune of 5% in the patients arthritis mutilans is again in the tune of 5% in the patients distal interphalangeal joints it is again in the tune of 5% in the patients symmetrical polyarticular it is seen in the tune of 15% in the patients and majority of the patient is asymmetrical oligoarticular that is around 70% of the patients. So the answer will be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 because all the 1, 2 and 3 are 5% so it can be any way uh, out of these 3 but majority or the most common is asymmetrical oligoarticular. So patient with psoriasis Patient may have psoriasis for months and years before they develop psoriatic arthritis. So symmetrical polyarticular, it is seen in around 15% of the patients. Asymmetrical oligoarticular, it is seen in around 70% of the patients. Distal interphalangeal joint predominant involvement, it is seen in 5%. Arthritis mutilans is again seen in 5%. And this arthritis mutilans is associated with opera glass, pencil in cup deformity or sausage shaped fingers. Axial arthritis is again 5%. I'll show you the clinical images of these type of psoriatic arthritis. So this is symmetrical psoriatic arthritis. You can see all the joints are involved symmetrically. While this is asymmetrical, you know that you have got asymmetrical arrangement or asymmetrical involvement of the joints. This thing is distal interphalangeal joint predominant psoriatic arthritis so only the distal interphalangeal joints are involved and this is spondylitis axial psoriatic arthritis or spondylitis psoriatic arthritis lastly we have got this type of images that is arthritis mutilans associated with opera glass pencil in cup deformity or sausage shaped finger so these are arthritis mutilans coming to question number two Arrange the following disorders according to their prevalence in causing erythroderma. You have choices as psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, mycosis fungoides, drugs or idiopathy. So, psoriasis as a cause of erythroderma, it is seen in 8% of the patients. Atopic dermatitis as a cause of erythroderma, it is seen in 10% of the patients. Mycosis fungoides as a cause of erythroderma, it is seen in 14% of the patients. Drugs are cause of erythroderma in around 28% of the patients and idiopathic cause is around 30%. So, the correct answer will be 5 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is the arrangement of the disorders according to their prevalence in causing erythroderma. Let's have a brief discussion on it. So this is erythroderma wherein greater than 90% body surface area is involved with erythema and scaling. So it is a scaly erythematous dermatitis involving greater than 90% or more of body surface area. 
It was discovered by von Hebra in 1868. It is extreme state of skin dysmetabolism, giving rise to intense erythema and scaling, and it could be fatal due to metabolic burden and complications. The causes of erythroderma, according to their prevalence, idiopathic is around 30%, drugs, they count for 28%, seboric dermatitis, it is 2% of the cases of erythroderma are due to seboric dermatitis, contact dermatitis, it is responsible for 3% of total cases of erythroderma, atopic dermatitis, usually seen in 10% of the patients, lymphoma and leukemia, erythroderma is seen in 14% of the patients, and with psoriasis, the erythroderma is seen in around 8% of the patients. Coming to question number 3. Arrange the following manifestation of Hansen's disease in the order of their prevalence. You have BT Hansen's, BB Hansen's, LL Hansen's, Histoid Hansen's and BL Hansen's. So I should give you the correct answer. The correct answer is BT Hansen's. It accounts for around 70 to 57% patients of Hansen's disease. The BB around 1.5% patients of Hansen's disease. LL usually 8.1% patients are seen with LL. Histoid 0.5% of patients are seen with histoid Hansen and BLN, BL. BL Hansen's 24.9% patients are with BL Hansen's. So the correct answer will be 1, then 5, then 3, then 2, and then 4. So this will be the correct arrangement of the manifestations of Hansen's disease in the order of their prevalence for the given question. So Hansen's disease, as I have told you, BT Hansen's, it is seen in 56.3% of the patients. BL Hansen's, it is seen in 24.9% of the patients. LL Hansen's, it is seen in 8.1% of the patients. Pure neuritic is again seen in 8.1% of the patients. Pure BB with borderline, they account for 1.5% of the patients. Both indeterminate and histoid, they account for 0.5% of the patients each. Now, I would like to provide you some important information about leprosy. So leprosy is a chronic granulomatous disease, affects skin and peripheral nerves. So what are the organs involved? So these are multiple choice questions in dermatology. So skin, muscles, eyes, bones and testes, they are involved. And what are the organs which are never involved in leprosy? They are cardiovascular system, central nervous system, ovaries, lungs and GIT. Earliest involvement will be of nasal mucosa and nerves. Earliest sign will be vague hypopigmented macule with or without neural involvement. Histology in early stage will show perineural inflammation and Schwann cell proliferation. That is around the nerve bundle, uh, bundles, uh, inflammation will be there. In later stage, it will be intraneural. The inflammation will, will go deeper into the nerve bundle. Government of India started National Leprosy Control Program in the year 1955 for case detection, community education and treatment with Depsone was started. So if the question is asked when that treatment with, with Depsone was started, it was way back in the year 1955. Later on, it was changed to National Leprosy Eradication Program in the year 1983 with the introduction of multi-drug therapy. So multi-drug therapy was started in the year 1983. Apart from incidence and prevalence, patients with grade 2 deformities, grade 2 deformities in new leprosy patient is being taken as indicator of infection in the community. So you have three indicators of uh, infection in community. One is incidence. Second is prevalence and third is grade 2 deformity. 
WHO defined elimination of leprosy as prevalence rate below one case per 10,000 people in the country. And India reached this elimination target by the end of year 2005. So men is the only known reservoir of infection. Transmission is by aerosol shedding, direct skin to skin transfer and rarely by wounds, by tattooing, by and by utero transmission. BCG vaccination offers partial protection against leprosy. So guys, I want to give you important information regarding this Unacademy Plus platform. We are going to start medical marathon through MCQs for NIMHANS, AIMS and PGI. It will be a seven week course. Week one will be dedicated to single best answer type questions in every subject. Week two will be multiple true false type. Week three will be for match the following type questions. Week four will be for sequential arrangement type questions. Week five will be for multiple completion type. Week six is for reason assertion type. And week seven, it is reserved for extended match, matching items and questions. So the batch course will start on 9th of March 2020 and it will end on 26th April, 26th April 2020. And if you want to join, you can use this code Dr. Avnish-YT and you will get 10% of discount on your subscription. With this, I will end this session and I wish you all the very best and happy learning. Thank you for watching.